All right, all right, all right. Guru here. Well, as you can see behind me, <laughs> we're way up in the Coast Range Mountains. I'm up here running the dogs. Um, well, uh, let's see. Bird season's over, but we have, uh, we're going to a bird preserve and uh, gonna do some hunting. Late, last, last, you know, uh, kind of, you could almost say spring bird hunting. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with the bird preserve, uh, basically what that is, is it's a, it's a piece of ground where, you know, they have pheasants and grouse and, you know, they'll have all kinds of birds that they raise and then they release on their ground and then you can go there and hunt. It's a great way if you are not, uh, a hunter or you want to try to get in to hunting, it's a great way for you guys to, uh, to experience that. All you need is a shotgun, some shells, and, you know, the willingness to learn. And there's all kinds of bird preserves out there. I'm going to, uh, Luckamute, uh, a hunting, uh, preserve, which is, oh, it's basically kind of by Corvallis. So for me, it's like less than an hour from my house, but, uh, Oregon's got a lot of them. Um, I know, uh, Sage Canyon over near Maupin is a real popular one. And then one I've been to before over by Pendleton, Oregon called Ellis Ranch. And that, uh, Ellis Ranch, that's, man, those guys will teach you more about bird hunting in, in a weekend than, uh, than you can learn and, you know, going out by yourself a dozen times. So that being said, uh, you know. If you want to get into hunting, bird hunting is a good way to do it, and uh, especially uh, you know on a preserve, because you know you're going to run into birds. You know you're going to get guaranteed birds. Um, if you have you know bird dogs that you want to get in, you know and don't have a lot of time to train, they can help you with that. Most of those places all do dog training. They all have their own dogs, and so you don't even need to have your own dogs. You can just show up and, and go bird hunting. So. Uh, check them out but anyways let's get to the fishing um man that's a beautiful view isn't it <laughs> there's a i don't know if you can see it uh in it there's actually a log loader up there they're getting ready to they're doing some cutting but they they uh uh they looks like they the, well that's definitely maybe it we're done here i'll i'll pick the camera up and we'll zoom in on it but um there's a loader up there and there's then there's the yarder they got set up but there's still some trees standing so it's they're probably just getting ready to start start uh doing it we're we're way up in the coast range this is basically what i call the divide um it's kind of up by barney reservoir where one side is the coast the other side drains off into the valley so as the crow flies we're probably oh no 25 oh uh, it's probably less than 30 miles from the ocean so we're not that you know we're pretty pretty far i i think our elevation here is only like 2,000 feet which is pretty high for the coast range most of the coast ranges you know the the big peaks there might be four or five thousand to get down south you get some big ones down uh in the rogue down there you know seven eight thousand down there but um so yesterday we floated the tr uh the trask we floated the sandy me and albert we we're all by our lonesome uh i hooked two uh lost them both in fact i made a rookie rookie mistake i had old line on my spinner rod uh from this summer which i should have changed uh the first of the year um usually i change all my line for sure the first of the year I reverse the braid that's on the reel and uh, flip that because braid usually you can fish quite a long time. Um, but I had a fish, caught the fish, um, but I had a fray in the line and it broke between my reel and the first eye. It was fucking disappointing, let me tell you. Absolutely heartbroken, but it was my fault. I did that. I should have changed that line. Um, now, I don't want to say the... Uh, maker of that line because it is good line and I don't want people to have a, a an ill opinion of it it was just my fault it was old 
I'd fought fish on that line and, you know, especially on the Deschutes. So it was always, you know, dragging on rocks and stuff like that. But it was just, that was my fault. I should have changed that. Um, the trip before that with the contest winners, uh, Josh and, and Dean, uh, we got one fish, uh, missed a few others, got some trout. Um, but more importantly, this is what I want to talk about. This is the main reason I'm doing this video. There are seals in the lower Nestucca. We seen a seal right, uh, so right as you put in at Farmer's Creek, that first big hole on the corner where it turns, that big deep hole, there was a seal in there. In fact, Albert fished the, the Nestucca on Friday. Um, they didn't get nothing, never even touched a trout but they seen a seal in the same spot. Um, so he's hanging out there. Um, we are allowed to haze seals. We cannot shoot them, but we can definitely haze them. So uh, they have some shotgun rounds that you can get to haze the seals and the sea lions. I know you can use a slingshot if you wanna shoot some, some uh, you know, some rocks that you get in the, you know, some gravel at them or something like that. But we need to get those seals out of the Nestucca, man. I have no doubt they're having an effect on the fishing. Uh, not a doubt in my mind. We seen a second seal down that last hole as you're coming out of Tidewater on Cloverdale. Um, oh, you're around the corner, so you're not right quite in Cloverdale, but it's that last big deep hole up there. We seen one there, it came up right behind the boat. So, man, that's no good for us. I have personally never seen seals on the coast that high. I've seen them down in Tidewater quite a bit, but I've never seen them that high where they're that far up river into fresh water. There's no doubt they're chasing the fish and uh, you know, we're, it's gonna be up to us to do something about it. So uh, just letting everybody know about that. Um, a lot of fish being caught, quite a few more than I thought, even though everything's getting real low and clear people are still getting fish i've been seeing uh, quite a few limits out of the owl sea but there's also you know a lot of people down there fishing um, and one thing i do want to suggest is that everything's dropping and we're getting less rain you can go fish bigger systems um, you know i'm hoping to uh, get even further south uh do a little video with my buddy at uh at sns fishing down on the salusala um, you know, some of, uh, we're, we're looking at getting down to Bandon, fishing the Coquille, fishing the Umpqua. We have family in Grants Pass. So we're thinking about going down there to, to see the new baby and, uh, doing a little fishing down there too. So, but the bigger systems, um, you know, are dropping into shape. So don't be afraid to get out there and try those when everybody else is on the smaller stuff. Um, Remember too, when it does get this low, fish low. So like right now, unless you're fishing some of the bigger, deeper holes, you know, get down low. Um, you know, cause those fish aren't gonna, they're only gonna be moving at night. They're not gonna really be moving during the day. So they will hold up in those holes until it gets dark. So, you know, first thing in the morning, uh, evening is gonna be kind of the, the prime times where you wanna be as far as the fishing goes. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, pack your patience. A lot of, it's been a busy year. Um, and for everybody who's been out there, you know, like we have, you can see that there's lots of people. So let's everybody pack your patience. Everybody try to be nice. We only had one boat yesterday that were assholes and low hold the shit out of us and fished our water, but we low hold them back. So. <laughs> you know, they, I think they got the point because from then off, you know, after that, they didn't come near us. And that's a, that's the thing, you know, don't fish other people's water. Don't get in their way. There's plenty of room, you know, don't just power fish through everything. Hold up in a good spot, fish it, use multiple techniques. Don't just, you know, power fish through everything like everybody else is doing. You know, we seen boats yesterday where we seen them first thing, you know, at Oxbow. And uh, shit, we didn't see them the rest of the day. They were just boogieing downstream, 
you know, bobber dogging everything, just power fishing the shit out of it. And if they didn't get nothing, well, that spot where we hooked to, we stopped there for a good 35, 45 minutes. And uh, I knew there would be fish there. Boats went by, they didn't get nothing, but we hooked two in there. So let that be a lesson to you. But uh, we're not supposed to get any rain for a while. It's gonna be kind of bleak. Everything is gonna be low and clear. It's a good time to also go look at spots that, uh, you know, go look at areas where you, you've wanted to see why fish hold there. You're gonna be able to see the rocks. You're gonna be see able, be able to, to see all the structure. And in this day and age, take some fucking pictures of the structure. You can make an album of pictures of the structure. That way, when the water gets back up to normal levels, you know where to fish. Keep a journal. Write everything down. That way, when you go back to that spot, you kind of know the time of year, the water level, clarity. There's a million fishing journals out there you can buy. You should have one, and you should be writing everything down. I've been doing it for years, and it matters, and it definitely helps. Um, you know, I, I, I want to really push that hard. Pictures and journal. Um, you know, you got your little GoPro on your chest? Okay, fine, you didn't get any fish, but you can GoPro that beautiful structure that you can see now because it's low and clear that you couldn't see before. So, oh, my dogs are from Jasper's. Jasper, what are you doing, boy? <laughs> yeah, they're getting antsy. We'll, we'll keep this one short and sweet. Hey, I got a lot of new subscribers this week. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your support. I've had so much support in the last month. Bless you all, man. Um, I'm just trying to do what feels right. Trying to, trying to, you know, just trying to help everybody, uh, help everyone. Trying to, trying to take the learning curve out of it. Cause I know when I started out, there just wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of helping hands. Um, you know, my dad didn't like doing salmon and steelhead fishing. Uh, you know, uh, it just wasn't his thing. My mom was actually, she was the, the one that really cultivated all this, you know, for me um, growing up. And uh, she's, I always credit her uh, for, for keeping my, my fishing dreams alive and, and becoming a guide and all that. And I know, uh, I know she's shining down. She's looking at me going, hell yeah. But uh, that being said, um, Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your support. I love it. And we're going to keep this thing going. Uh, so this week, uh, sportsman show. I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait, make it. Uh, my wife's having some procedures, some things done. So I took two days off. Uh, they have to put her under. So I took a few days off to, uh, to take care of her. Um, so... If I can go, it may be Friday evening, but I don't know for sure if I'm gonna be able to go. <laughs> Jesse Bear. He's running around here. <laughs> Trying to get Charlie to play, but. But, uh, you know, if I can go, hey, uh, I'll be wearing jacked gear. Here, let me take it off. So, uh, hey, if you see me, flag me down, man. Let's talk some fishing. I don't go every year. You know, I try to go every other year um, just so I can see some new stuff. And uh, But, hey, you know, they're going to have all kinds of good deals on tackle and rods. Last year, I got my two edge rods for 500 bucks, you know, 250 a piece, which was a screaming deal. Everybody will have rod deals. So if you want that premium grade rod like an edge, and that's who I support. Um, but also, well... I support Lama Glass and G Loomis too. You know, I've said for years the best fishing rods in the world are all made in Woodland, Washington. And so, if you're you're going with a Lama Glass, you're going with a Loomis, you're going with uh, uh, you know a G Loomis. I mean, uh, uh, an Edge rod. You know, those are premium grade rods, man. Um, 
they're, they're made right in Woodland. You can't go wrong. And uh, more importantly, they're putting Northwest people to work. So you know when you buy one of those rods that's handmade in Woodland, Washington, those dollars are going to help feed the people in our area. And there ain't nothing that can beat that. So uh, go support them. And uh, Vine Edge. <laughs> I love them, man. I actually, I own all three. So, but uh, man, those edge rods, they're, they're just so much lighter. It's, it's like having air in your hands, man. They're just, everything about them is just great. So I know I'll probably get some haters on that, but hey, I just, I love the edge and uh, you know, thank you, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, you know, I, I'm a little prejudiced towards the edge, but I still fish my Loomis rods, man, and my Lama glass. So I still love those too. But that being said, hey, uh, we'll keep this one nice, short and sweet. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your support. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for trusting me. Still working on the bobber dogging thing. We tried some uh, some shit yesterday, uh, an old school style of fishing called balloon fishing. Now, using balloons for fishing is nothing new. People do it all the time. I just was trying to use it for bobber dogging. Didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Um, kind of looked worked more like a, a, a bobber you know than it did a bobber dogger where it's it's pulling it's kind of uh, it just didn't work the same but I thought the balloon would work but uh, just was not what I thought it was gonna be but uh, I'll work on the problem because paying fucking ten dollars for two bobber doggers fucking ridiculous when I know that they probably only paid a quarter at most in China or Japan to fucking make those things. So there's my tirade for the day. <laughs> so, but that being said, hey, thank you everyone. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your trust. Uh, we're gonna keep this thing going. Uh, jacked forever, man, jacked forever. And uh, God bless, shoot straight, tight lines, guru out. Love you all. <laughs>